What goes into your head when we speak the name of Jose P. Rizal? Of course, the Philippines' national hero. Everybody knew him that way. But you know what? There's more to it. Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado E. Alonso Rialonda is also known as a rural physician, a farmer, a merchant, an inventor, a painter, a sculptor, an archaeologist, a linguist, a teacher, an architect, a poet, a biologist, and also an environmentalist. Name it all. Is there anything else that this versatile being can do? Imagine being a man with multiple talents and skills. He's a man of wisdom, courage, and bravery. Here, I'm going to bring you back in time. I'm going to turn the hands of the clock backwards for you to have a glance about the roller coaster yet very influential life of Dr. Jose P. Rizal here in the Pitan City. I will take you to places that resemble history. I will tell you tales that you hadn't heard before. What you will see are not just old artifacts, not just building built from the past, not just ordinary memorabilia. They speak the core of patriotism, of hope, of optimism that the youth of today should possess. So stay there as I bring you back to the life of Dr. Josepi Rizal here in Rizal Shrine, the Pitan City. The Pitan City, the shrine city of the Philippines. This is where the ever-famous Jose Rizal Shrine is located. There's no possible way that a person who does a trip in the Pitan City would skip this historically significant place. Rizal Shrine is not just your typical tourist spot. Believe it or not, it is a 16-hectare estate here in Barangay Talisay, the Pitan City. But, wait, who owns it? Well, no other than Jose Rizal himself. Rizal purchased the estate for 4,000 pesos. Back then, that was a pretty huge amount. And ever wonder where he got it? Well, Jose Rizal won a lottery at Reales Loterias Españolas de Filipinas with the lucky number 9736. In 1930, the site was converted into a public park as years dragged by and through the proclamation number 616 signed by President Manuel Luis Quezon, this protected area was established in 1914 as the Rizal National Park and covered an initial area of 10 hectares. So our first stop would be the Misa Nirsal. This is found near the Shrine's Gate. It reserves Rizal's personal writings such as books, letters, poems, and some of his particular wardrobe like journals, copies of his artworks, his apparatuses for fishing, his original medical instruments, his original blackboard, table, and even chairs used for teaching his pupils and other historical displays. If only walls could talk, they will tell us great events that happen within them, like for example, these poignant letters. These were written in the Pitan. The letters spoke about absurd love, about opinions, about truth, about fictions, and also about his life. One of the most advanced features found is that the museum also has an e-learning room for online lessons regarding the National Historical Commission on Philippine History. So there is no way for us not to be intrigued to pursue knowing results life. Next, let me take you to Casitas de Salud. This is called the Health Houses. Two huts were built on the top of a low hill. However, the two main structures were former tea houses. But then, later on, this was converted into a health clinic where one structure was for the males while other for the females. His golden heart continuously beats to help his countrymen. This was all for the intention to accommodate different patients from far-flung municipalities which provided them lodgings. Now, let me take you to Casa Cuadrada. This home is still naturally reconstructed with original lights and natural materials. So yes, you're under the shade of the same light where Rizal used to read his books. You're also within the same walls and in between the hallways, retracing Jose Rizal's footsteps. Cuadrada is translated as a square. This operated as a school for the Rizal students as well as a secondary dormitory. And from the square house, now 
now let's proceed to the roundhouse, the Casa Redonda. Rizal always aimed to provide his students with the best convenience. This is an octagonal dwelling which used as a dormitory by his pupils. Take a look at this area and imagine Dr. Jose Rizal as your teacher. Imagine the sound of his voice while educating you with a profound lesson. This is the specific area in which Rizal mainly held his lectures. But as years kept on, this was later transformed as a clinic. Next, I'll bring you to Casa Residencia. Here, as you can see, the house shows a bedroom, a veranda along the main space, which can be reached from the side to side by a bridge. However, this is one of the most uh, controversial places here in Rizal Shrine. Ever wonder why? This rectangular house where Dr. Jose Rizal lived during his days of exile holds hearsay that beneath this was where he buried his child with Josephine Bracken. If it leaves you a question about who Marie Josephine Leopoldine Bracken was, she's the common law wife of Jose Rizal. However, it leaves an unending uncertainty whether it's true or not as Jose Rizal indicated in his writings that he burned the gazebo down. Next is the Akedam, or the Patubig Satalitan. The Akedam structure of lagoon cutting across the shrine was assembled in the year 1895 by Rizal himself. The water system, nursing a water reservoir connected by bamboo tubes to the kitchen and their lavatory. This has provided sufficient and year-round water resources for Rizal to his farm. Welcome to Casa Redonda Pequeña. As you could see, this was built uniquely with a hexagonal structure. This area was used as the main kitchen kit house back on Rizal's era. Now, we're here at Miritero Rock, or Ang Bato ng Miritero. Have you ever read his famous poem, Miritero? Well, imagine him writing it here in this pretty heart-shaped rock. Imagine Rizal resting in this pond in which he had inscribed beautiful words from that well-known poem. Just by standing at this corner, you could totally agree with how this place has a serious place. History says that this is where Dr. Jose Rizal had spent time watching sunset. Here in this exact rock place. Aside from that, this was also his favorite dating spot with Joseph. At the same time, this was where the couple exchanged their vows through an informal way. And our last stop would be this wonderfully made landmark of the statues of Dr. Pio and Rizal is located. And not so far from this is where the steamship Venus gusted its whistle. The young man was Dr. Pio Valenzuela, who was recognized as the most highly educated among the Catholic made his journey here in the Pitan to meet the Rizal. The Venus cast anchor at the port of the Pitan, about 500 meters away from the house of Dr. Rizal, now the Rizal Shrine. And here, I am standing right next to the statues of Dr. Pio of Valenzuela and Rizal like they were sharing converse. I know that you, as Boy Scouts of the Philippines, are encouraged to visit at least one of the three shrines of the country. But because of the pandemic, you are stuck wherever you are. You cannot freely move one place to another without fear of being contracted with the virus. But in spite of this, no virus could prevent us from seeing beautiful places. Thanks to the modern technology, with its help, we can still see and get information through social media. In behalf of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, and as officer in charge of the Museo Jose Rizal in Dapitan, we are glad and grateful to the organizer for choosing Museo Ni Jose Rizal, the place to conduct virtual tour.
they are in line with the mission of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. That is, to inculcate awareness and appreciation of the noble deeds and ideals of our heroes and other illustrious Filipinos. Another thing is to instill pride in the Filipino race and to rekindle the Filipino spirit through the lessons of history. There are lots of things you and the youth of today can do for the betterment of your future. You should remember Jose Rizal's saying, one only dies once. And if one does not die well, a good opportunity is lost and will not present itself again. To you, dear scouters out there, I encourage you to emulate the ideas, teachings, and examples of our national hero. Make him your model to make our place, that is, our country, a better place to live in. As officer in charge of the place, allow me to invite you to come and visit this place together with your family and friends as soon as this pandemic is over. Thank you very much. Please keep yourselves be safe always. May God bless us all. It gives me chills to think about the hero who once walked where you walk. The man who built this beautiful heritage we are now enjoying. The man who left a culture of excellence in the blood of every Filipino. And just imagine I want you to imagine the spirit of this hero silently standing right just next to you. Yes, we are here where he once stood. We are here where he once resided. And we are here to remember his heroic acts. At sa pagtatapos sa ating paglilibot, naway hindi natin kalimutan ang bayani na minsan itumira sa dapit.